On my last full day in the Hebrides, I decided to take a bus to the Kalanish Standing Stones. I'll call it Kalanish from here on out, even though the Gallic pronunciation looks something like Kalanese, but I'm not going to butcher it, so we'll just go with Kalanish. The ride to the stones was beautiful. As I watched the landscape roll by, it felt a little bittersweet. I wasn't seeing it as I'd originally intended to, but in the end, I was able to see it, and that's what mattered. The visitor center has a lovely cafe, which serves not only meals, but wonderful coffee. I decided to sit and enjoy one while looking out the window at the beautiful views that I would certainly miss after I left. After that, I headed next door to the souvenir shop to pick up a couple of small trinkets for friends and family members. There's also a museum right next to the souvenir shop, but I decided to forego that as I noticed it was starting to rain. So I put on my rain gear and headed up the hill. The Standing Stones, once buried under five feet of peat, are a short walk from the visitor's center on a hill overlooking the area. Predating England's Stonehenge, the stones are laid out in a cruciform pattern and believed to be a site of ritual activity. Local lore dating back to the 1600s said the stones were the remains of men who'd been turned to stone for their transgressions, other legends had them as petrified non-believers who wouldn't convert to Christianity. It's also been suggested that the stones might have served as a lunar observatory, but no one really knows. They've been featured in works of art, music, and literature, more recently as the inspiration for a certain popular TV series where the stones are believed to have magical time-traveling powers. Whatever they might have been used for, there's no doubt that this site is a magical and beautiful place. I felt incredibly blessed to be able to walk amongst the stones, imagining what kind of ritualistic or maybe even just mundane activities of daily life may have occurred here long ago.
reunited with my trekking poles. Yay! Goodness, look at this. Just need to go get some almond milk. Or some oat milk. Got everything you need in here. Look at that. Since it had been closed the previous day, I returned to Lou's Castle to check out the museum. The Lewis chessmen are named after the island where they were found in 1831. Carved from mostly walrus ivory, they may be some of the few surviving medieval chess sets in the world. When found, there were 93 pieces, including 78 chess pieces, 14 tablemen, and one belt buckle. Today, only six reside where they were found, and there has been much dispute over where they should permanently remain.
Hey guys, I just noticed my glasses look um, lopsided. <laughs> oh well. I am in my Airbnb. I made this reservation before I left the States um, so that I could kind of have a chill couple of days at the end of the Hebridean Way. So I did end up skipping the last two sections. I felt that the inclines would be um, too difficult for me and I was starting to feel like my tendonitis was going to be acting up and I have two trails to do after this so I said you know what I'm just going to take a rest and stayed at one of the hostels here in town and then this last uh, couple of nights I stayed at the Airbnb that I had already reserved. Several people that I met along the way have done similar things. I will talk a little bit more about my thoughts on this trail and what I heard from other people along the way, both walkers and cyclists, in a follow-up video. Tomorrow morning, I am on a flight from Stornoway to Glasgow where I will be catching a train down to Ulverston. I have camping gas and stuff um, that I'm going to have to do away with because you can't take that on the plane. Um, I hear there's all kinds of outdoor stores in Ulverston, so I'm just going to pick that up as well as a few camping meals. I still have a good deal of food. I sometimes have a tendency to bring more food than I really need. I do wanna have a couple of camping meals on hand just in case. Um, I did meet some lovely ladies along the trail who live in uh, the Lake District who offered me a place to stay on one of my nights that I actually didn't have anywhere booked to go to. So that was super nice. So I looked into Bounce and Stasher for my bag here. Um, what I think I'm going to end up doing is ditching the bag. It's a cheap $25 Walmart bag. And to leave it will be over 106 pounds um, to leave it to the end of my time here. And it's just not worth it to me. I will get another bag. I've got a taxi for tomorrow morning. I met a, um, a lady earlier who drives a taxi and made an appointment with her to pick me up tomorrow morning to go to the airport. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to kind of chill out, watch TV, and uh, maybe take another walk. And uh, tomorrow it's on to Cumbria.